Hey everybody, it's been a while. Things are coming back together finally, and so I just want to get back to posting videos and I finally finished a game the other day that really made me want to post something new. So for this video I thought I'd do a quick review of that game. I just finished it a few days ago, like I said, and it's I've, I've let myself sit and uh, fully digest the game. And I, I really feel like I'm pretty qualified to talk about it now. I've I put 95 hours in and I completed all of the optional bosses and the quests and everything. And so that game that I'm talking about, as the title of this video probably uh, spoiled, is Tales of Arise. It's the most recent game in the Tales series and it, can't, it comes after a five year gap after the release of Tales of Berseria. It had a long marketing cycle before it released, including a demo. And the demo did get some good impressions. However, it seemed to be a little bit mixed since it threw you into the game without any tutorials on all of the combat systems in the game. With this review and the ones I'm gonna be doing afterwards, I wanna play around with it and decide what kind of format I like the most. For now, we're gonna start with separating the things that I liked from the things I didn't like so much. So, starting with the good stuff. I did play the PlayStation 5 version of the game and graphically the game was beautiful. I really enjoyed this. The demo gave you a good idea of what to expect in one specific area. It showed off the water and um, a little bit of the scenery and everything and the grass and a couple of creatures. But actually getting to visit all of the separate areas in the game with all of the different design motifs out of each individual area was wonderful. I, I, I really enjoyed the character designs in this game. On the subject of music, the music in the game is competent. It's just not something that's going to blow you away. It, it wasn't incredible, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad by any means. None of the tracks are stuck in my head, and I haven't felt the need to listen to any of them after my time with the game. I, I, I can't really remember any of them outside of the um, song that plays when you leave uh, the, the game selected on the PlayStation 5 menu from when I would pause the game. And surprisingly, I really enjoyed the entire cast of characters in this game. Normally, in, in these style of JRPGs, the main cast has some people that I don't like. Normally, there's at least one or two, maybe even more. Sometimes I just like the game mostly for playing the game and seeing the world and not so much the characters. Tales of Arise is not that case at all. Everybody was well worth using in combat. Everybody had a fun or interesting storyline. Everybody was a well-rounded character. Some of them weren't incredibly interesting or anything, but they were definitely... I definitely was interested in knowing where they came from, how they got to where they are, and how they feel about everything happening around them, which is different. The voice acting on those characters was also really well done. Um, most of those characters are voiced by people that you'll know out of either an anime or another JRPG or another regular game that you may have played. Um, most specifically, I think my favorite was probably Alfin. Yeah, you hear him for most of the game. He's the most most spoken character, but he's, he's the, the one that I... Um, probably felt the most connected with. Now we come up to my favorite part of this game. The combat system in this game was awesome. It never lost its appeal. It never felt boring. It was fantastic. The combat was a lot deeper than I expected. Coming into this game as opposed to the demo, you get a full tutorial for every little additional section of the combat system. So they get slowly added in and introduced to you, rather than just all of it once. Just like the other Tales games, there's standard attacks and then the arts in the combat. So you got those skills as well as the regular, you know, single sword strikes or gunshots or whatever. And there's quite a few of them, and you can change them in and out uh, as you see fit. You can change them out in the middle of combat if you want. 
and every character is controllable. So you could play as Xion if you wanted to, or you can play as Alfin, or you can play as Law, it doesn't matter. You can play as everybody you want. And that was a welcome addition. I, I was surprised to find that you could play everybody. During combat, there's a couple of extra things added, like the boost strike system. That boost strike system operates off of a gauge that builds over time, as well as when your characters do things like knock enemies down. So once that gauge is full, you can summon whichever character it is to jump in and do their boost strike on whoever, whichever enemy you're targeting. At first, when I was playing, it just felt like something to add into the combat to give some flair or just uh, you know something else to do other than just swinging and using your arts. But each character's boost strike does have a, uh, a specific use. It is the weakness of quite a few different enemies. So Law's um, boost strike is specifically good against one type of enemy and breaks them and lets them fall down and opens them up for extra damage. Just like uh, Xion's is good against other certain ones. It's, it's really interesting and adds a little bit of depth to it. It creates more strategies, uh, more opportunities for strategy. The combat in the game is hard, however. At first, the game just seemed punishingly difficult. After a little bit of fiddling, I found out that what was happening is I'm playing the game like a hack and slash, and it, it's not. Uh, you're not supposed to just run in and swing until everything is dead. You have to play with some kind of tactics. I found out while playing on normal difficulty that I did actually have to utilize that break and boost system in order to actually win. Also, the uh, save all items mentality that I live with, and I assume a lot of you will in most JRPGs, that mentality has no place in Tales of Arise. If you take no other advice from this review, this message, use your items in this game. It, yeah, it, it cannot be overstated. You will need them. At this point, I can't imagine a Tails battle system without this. I, I fully expect them to use boost strikes and the other um, new additions in combat into the new games when they come. When it comes to the subject of collectibles, I get a little frustrated with um, open world games that have just an absolute ton of them. I, I, I'll i do it in some games if I really like them, but I can get a little flustered if they're really hard to find or really obscure and difficult to find. In this game, there's only one collectible, and they're not super difficult to find. They're not super obscure. Generally, you'll run into them just playing through the game as long as you explore. And exploring in this game is the only way you're going to get new armor unless you're going to buy all of it. Um, so the, the owls are a little weird. <laughs> Their voice over work is a little strange. Instead of sounding like <coughs> owls, they sound like people making owl noises. <coughs> it's kind of odd but a little bit funny at the same time. Now, to be overly vague and talk about the story, because I really don't want to ruin anything story-wise, the game does start off at an interesting point, giving you a glimpse into the life of Alfin as a slave in one subsect of the world of Dana. The game tries and does a fair job of showing you how difficult the life of these particular slaves are, with each story beat, the game world did develop further and grow larger. The story was definitely darker in tone than I expected, which was a nice surprise here. As I said before, the characters did develop well, and they were well worth following their stories throughout the game. A lot of the cutscenes, which there are quite a few of, were fun to watch, and... The story stuff, they do add in, surprisingly, anime-style cutscenes, which were honestly really fun to watch. At no point in the story was I so disinterested in the game that I wanted to quit or anything along those lines. The story definitely kept me interested to where I wanted to see what came at the end. I needed to know specific 
beats. I needed to know specific things about this story. And the game definitely kept me tied in that way. Now, we're going to move on to the not-so-good things. The only true nitpicks I have about Tales of Arise, graphically, is that the different armor sets don't actually change the way your characters look. They are just stat boosts. You get a few character armor changes throughout the game, but none of them are tied to actually what your armor that you're wearing are. It's tied to story changes. And then on top of that, a lot of the enemies are actually just small iterations of the first versions of those enemies. Like just color changes, like having a little bit of blue or maybe a little bit of ice. And then small changes like having lava. And that, that's that's really it. They're the same skin, they're the same base enemy with the new skin, which got a little bit frustrating towards the end of the game. And then on the music front, the game did have a few times that the music felt out of place. Like running in a field with nothing happening, just running around doing side quests, and all of a sudden an epic final dungeon track is playing in the background out of nowhere. And it stays like that for a few minutes until you leave the zone. It, it made no sense. It didn't fit. It, decent song. <laughs> but it didn't fit in that location. Or in that instance. There was nothing happening. With most of the gameplay mechanics of Tales of Arise. I, I would say that they were a big step up from the previous iterations that I have played. There is a notable exception to that though. The, the economy system in this game was just not my cup of tea whatsoever. The money in this game, uh, the gold, is needed for just about everything, from buying items, to crafting weapons, to managing your other sim things. It, it's, it's kind of crazy how much gold you need in this game. You only get gold for completing side quests, selling your materials or weapons or items, or from random chests or item drops in the world. You don't get any of it from combat whatsoever. Crafting a weapon requires materials. You can't just buy a weapon. It requires materials and a good bit of money. And it gets extremely expensive towards the end of the game. You have to farm to get that stuff. You have to fight enemies of certain types to get the items to make certain weapons for certain characters. It kind of got a little frustrating, can't lie. And on the subject of frustration, the skit system has been a mainstay in the Tales series for a long time. And it's something I expected to return, and I did enjoy it most of the time. After a while, though, it felt like the skits just kept coming and coming, to the point where it seemed that they would never end. Me personally, when I play... An RPG, specifically JRPGs, as that I try to get absolutely everything I can out of the story, and this game felt like it took advantage of that aspect. Multiple times, one skit would pop up, and after spending five minutes watching that one skit, another one would pop up that's completely unrelated immediately. So you have to watch them back to back, or you'll have to come back to them later on and it's completely out of sync, and it could be, you know, you could be at the end of the game watching a skit from the first part of the game. So I had to watch them in order for my own sanity. So that those, those skits are optional, and it's just a nitpick, but for me and the way I consume a JRPG, they were definitely frustrating. And on the story subject, there are definitely some lulls in the game. The pacing of the story is not perfect. A few points in the story did feel a little bit off, and actually, a few of them had me and my wife saying in unison, just, what? Because it just felt completely out of place. But, like I said, the story is good. they are just a few points that felt off to me. So in the end, I would say that Tales of Arise was a wonderful experience. I don't regret a second that I spent playing this game. At every turn... I found joy 
and wonder exploring the world that the development team created. The only regret I feel at the moment is that there's nothing more for me to do in this world. I got 95 hours out of it, but I wish there was more at this point. Some JRPGs just do that to you, and this one was definitely one for me. I truly hope that they have more to show us in this world. Now, I don't know how I feel about giving numbers to games. I don't know. I, I would rather my words speak as to how I felt about the game. At this point, I don't feel too inclined to give a number 1 out of 5 or 1 out of 10 as to how I felt about the game. Because the review system, everybody uses 7 through 10. There's everything below that comes as a garbage game, and I, d I don't like it. I'd rather just say how I felt about it and have you use your inference on what I said as to how I felt about the game. So again, overall, I enjoyed the game. I personally felt it was well worth it. If it sounds like something you'd like, I'd really, really suggest you try it if you like JRPGs.